Hello, and welcome to the 2.1 through 2.4 quiz corrections and review session, where I'm going to go over all 19 questions from your quiz so that you can correct your own quizzes once I've returned the score. So for number one, um, the directions state write each percent as a decimal. So we're going from 21% to a decimal. So off to the side, I'm going to write percent to decimal left because that's pedal. So when we're going from percent to decimal left, all right, so since we're going from percent to decimal, that means we're going to move the decimal left. And since this is a whole number that doesn't already have a decimal, that means the decimal is right here at the end. It's that imaginary decimal that they tell you about when you're younger. So now we're going to go two spaces to the left. And remember, it's always two spaces because it's per cent. So it's per 100, which means 100 has two zeros. So the answer here should have been 0.21. All right, so for number two, it's also write each percent as a decimal. So you're still going to be using that pedal, P, D, L, because you're going from percent, which is what you have here, to decimal left. Now, just because there's a decimal already in it right here doesn't mean that it's already in decimal form. It means that you still need to move this decimal two spaces to the left. So let's go ahead and do that. So now we're going to go one, two. Now, because we had to move this decimal here, and because there's nothing in this space, we need to add a zero. So our answer for this problem should have been zero point, because you need that leading zero right there, and then you count one, two, three zeros, one, two, three zeros, and an eight. So it should be 0 0.008. I'm sorry, 0 0.0008, sorry about that. So you should have three zeros there, not including the leading zero. All right, so for numbers three, four, five, and six, it says to write each decimal as a percent. The reason I put all four of these on the same page is because this is probably the easiest stuff you're ever gonna do. So you're going from decimal to percent, so you need to go right. So in the corner, you can write D, P, R, decimal to percent right, because they gave you a decimal and they need a percent. So that means you're gonna go two spaces right, one, two, with an arrow. So that means your answer here should have been 35%. 1, 2, which is here, so your answer here should have been 71.2%. 1, 2, you have to add that 0 here because you've got that little egg cart in there with no uh, number in it, so your answer here would have been 750%. 1, 2, your answer here should have been 6.8%. So again, that was just memorizing decimal to percent right, percent to decimal left. So you should have gotten an easy six points right off the bat for those just by remembering what the procedure was. Okay, for this problem, number seven, um, they give you the fraction seven-eighths, and they say they want you to write the fraction or mixed number as a decimal. So we're going from fraction to decimal. And because this eight isn't really compatible with 100 at all, we're just going to have to do it the long way. So what that means is I'm going to take seven and divide it out by eight. Now we know because it's a fraction that just by definition of a fraction that this has to be zero decimal decimal zero because a fraction is a number less than one. So it wouldn't make sense for you to get anything like a one or a two or anything like that up there. So you know right away you have to add the zero decimal decimal zero. Then you're going to go ahead and look at it and go, okay, how many times does eight go into 70? Well, eight times six is 48. Oh, whoa, whoa, hold on, let's go back one step here. Try that again. Okay, 8 times 8 is 64, 8 times 9 and is 72, so 9 is too far, so 8, whoops, and I'm using my eraser still. So 8 times 8 is 64. So now you're left with 6 left over here, and let me just extend that again. 0, drop your 0. 8 goes into 67 times, you have 56 here. 4 left over, add a 0, and 8 goes into 45 times, and you get a 40 here, and 0. So your decimal is going to be 0 0.875. That should have been your final answer for number 7. All right, for this next problem, again, the directions are still write each fraction or mixed number as a decimal. So because this is a mixed number, what I'm going to do right away is I'm going to write equals 4 point something because this whole number means it's going to be four point something. That's the whole number. You can't forget about the whole number. A lot of people got this wrong because they left the whole number out. Once you've handled the whole number, now you're going to take three 25ths, and I'm going to realize that this 25 is compatible with 100. 
So I'm just going to set it equal to 100. And how do I get from 25 to 100? I multiply by 4. So that means up here I'm going to multiply by 4. 3 times 4 is 12. So this is 12 per 100. I can do my reverse lollipop here if I want, do the little dot there, and I realize that that's 4.12. And again, all we did here was we took the 4 plus the 0 0.12 that we got from right here. And that gave you the final answer of 4.12. For number 9, it says um, the instructions for 9, 10, and 11 are write each decimal as a fraction or mixed number in simplest form. So we're talking about a fraction if it is a number less than 1, and we're talking about a mixed number if it's a number greater than 1. So for the first one, 0 0.45, all we're going to do is use the lollipop method that we used before, and we're going to say, okay, draw our lollipop, our stick, 0, 0. Now, some of you changed this into 45 hundredths and then you left it right there. But remember that caveat at the end says simplest form, so that means you need to divide it out. So if you divide out 5 and 5, you actually get 9 twentieths, which is your final answer for this problem, 9 twentieths. Now number 10 seemed to cause a little bit of problems. Again, this um, the directions for number 10 are still write each decimal as a fraction or mixed number in simplest form. So you want to attack it the exact same way that you did the last one. We're going to draw our lollipop right here, our stick, and then remember we need zeros under any number that's to the right of the stick. So now our new problem that we're going to be working with, because we're going to have to simplify it, is 125 over 1,000. Now some of you did 125 over 100, so I know that you're not using the lollipop method, or at least you're not using it correctly. So now that you've got it 125 over 1,000, then you can divide out by 25. Anytime I see 25 at the end and zeros at the end, I think about quarters and dollars. So there are four quarters and a dollar. That takes care of my hundred. And then I have one extra quarter. So that's going to be five over. And then 25 times four is 100, which takes care of that. And then I still have that extra zero there, so I need to put that back there. Now, I've clearly not simplified it all the way. But in my mind, that's how I continue to get to simplest form because I don't know what I need to divide by any bigger. But I do know that 5 and 0 are both still divisible by 5. So let's go ahead and divide out that last 5. And you get 1 eighth. So your final answer for this problem should have been 1 eighth. All right, for this problem, again, the directions are still write each decimal as a fraction or mixed number in simplest form. And again, we're still going to use the lollipop method. So we've got our stick right here, and we've got zero, zero here. Now, there's something a little special about this problem in that you have this six, okay? So if you're going to be writing this as a fraction, you know that that fraction is going to have to start with six and then something, because six is your whole number because it was your whole number right here. So now we're just going to deal with this four over 100. So let's see what we need to do here. Let's get a different color. So now we've got 4 over 100 because we've already taken care of the 6 right here and here. And now we're just going to divide them out. I can divide by 4, divide by 4, and I am going to get 1 25ths. So it should be 6 and 1 25ths. A lot, a lot, a lot of you just gave me 1 25ths. You have to take your time and check your work and make sure that when you're dealing with whole numbers in front of the decimal that you have added that to your mixed number. All right, for number 12, it says to write each percent as a fraction or mixed number in simplest form. So we're going from percent to fraction. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to think to myself, okay, this is 430 percent, which literally means 430 per 100. Now, some of you just left it like this. This is definitely not simplest form, so you need to slow down and you need to think about what you have here. So you've got the bigger number on top, so you know you've got a couple whole numbers in here, which actually you have a total of four whole numbers because 100, 100, 100, 100, that makes 400. So you have four of those, and then you have 30 left over, and 100 is your denominator. But again, some of you still left it that way. You can't leave that last part not simplified you're going to need to divide out the 10 and divide out the 10. So your final answer here would have been 4 and 3 tenths. And 4 and 3 tenths. That's my final answer there. Okay, again, for number 13, the directions are still write each percent as a fraction or mixed number. 
So again, as I mentioned in the last problem, it literally means 48%, literally means 48 per 100. Remember, cent is like century, like 100 years. So it's 48 per 100. Some of you left it there, which is not simplified, so you needed to continue on. I can divide 4 out of both of these. So I know that 48 divided by 4 gives me 12, and 100 divided by 4 gives me 25. So my final answer should have been 12 25ths. All right, now number 14 was actually intended um, to be sort of a shortcut for you because on number 14 you see that fraction 7 eighths, which is the same fraction that you actually saw on number 7 as well. So in number 7, you converted 7 eighths to a decimal. So it says write each fraction as a percent. So if you remembered that you converted that fraction already to a decimal, then you could just look up at number 7 and realize that you got 0 0.875 there. And from the 0 0.875, you can just go ahead and go, okay, decimal to percent, I'm going to go right. Swoop, swoop, two spaces, and my percent is going to be 87.5%. No need to duplicate that work there. All right, for number 15, the directions say write each fraction as a percent. Now, this one was a little easier because this bottom number here, the denominator of 5, is compatible with 100. So when 5 is compatible with 100 and you're looking to change it into a percent, you can just write it over 100 because it's something per 100. So now you just need to keep it as a proportion and figure out what that top number is. So you say to yourself, how do I get from 5 to 100? Well, you multiply by 20. So since you multiply by 20 on the bottom, to keep that um, an equivalent fraction, you're going to multiply by 20 on the top. So 3 times 20 is going to give you 60. And again, this is literally 60 per 100, so your answer is just 60%. There was no need to change anything or anything like that because you had already set it um, up above 100, so that's 60 per 100. That's the exact definition of percent. All right, for number 16 and 17, the directions are write each percent as a decimal and as a mixed number or fraction in simplest form. So there's a reason why we asked you for two answers here. The reason is, is because to get from, um, to get from a percent to a fraction, a lot of times you're going to want to go through a decimal first. So let's go ahead and do the easy step first. If I'm given a percent and I need a decimal, then that means I'm going to be doing percent to decimal left. So my decimal is here because I can't see it, so that means it's at the end on the right. One, two spaces. So now my decimal is going to be 3.23. So that's the decimal answer here. And then from here, I can actually change that into a fraction because now this was one answer right here. So that's my decimal answer. So from here, we're going to go ahead and start with that 3.23 again. And now we need to change this into a fraction. So let's go ahead and make this a lollipop. Stick, zero, zero. Remember this three is a whole number, so it needs to be three and 23 one hundredths. And that's because we have 23 and 100 right there. So that is our final answer for the fraction. Okay, with number 17, the directions are still write each percent as a decimal and as a mixed number. Now, as I've mentioned several times before, just because there's a decimal in the problem doesn't mean that it's already a decimal. It's actually a percent. So that means we're going to go from percent to decimal left. Remember, that's our pedal dippers, percent to decimal left. So we're going to go from where the decimal is in the problem already, which is right here. Oops, hold on, which is right here. And we're going to swoop two spaces. Add a zero there. So now when we write our final answer, we have our leading zero, which remember does not change the problem at all. And then we have one, two zeros, one, two, and a five. So this is our decimal answer right here, 0 0.005. Remember that leading zero there, that is just for formatting, so it doesn't change the value at all. But you have to have it. It's kind of like the capital letter at the beginning of a sentence. So now we're going to go ahead and go from that decimal that we just got, which is 0 0.005, and we're going to change that decimal into a fraction because that's what our next answer asks for. So we're going to make our lollipop right there on the decimal, draw our stick, 
zero, zero, zero. See, that's very important, folks, that you're doing the lollipop method because that reminds you to put a zero under everything to the right of the decimal. So now you're going to get 5 over 1,000. And then to simplify that further, you're going to divide by 5, divide by 5, and you get a total of 1 over 200. So your final answer here is 1 two hundredths for the fraction. All right, for number 18, um, I have put a screenshot in here of the actual problem because it's a word problem, so I'd like you to see how we work with the problem. So it says, Jocelyn expects her new software company to increase its sales next year by two and three-fourth times their present value. Write this increase as a percent. Now notice I put a box or a highlight around two and three-fourths and then the word percent. They give it to you as a fraction, and now they're asking for it as a percent. So you just want to be really careful that you're converting to actually what they're asking you to convert it to, because a lot of you, um, not a lot of you, some of you still made that mistake where if they were asking you for a decimal, then you put in a fraction or so on. So let's go ahead and write what they gave us. They gave us two and three-fourths, and then they want that as a percent. So I'm going to show you a couple different ways to do that. The first thing I want you to see is that because it's a two, um, if we were going to change this into a decimal first so that we could then get it to a percent, it would be two point something. Whoops. It would be two point something because this two is a whole number. So it'll be two point. Now three fourths, if we don't know three fourths, which is 0.75, we should sort of know that off the top of our head, but if we don't, then we want to go three fourths is equal to 100, and to get from 24 to 100, I multiply, I'm sorry, to get from 4 to to 100, I multiply by 25, and to get from 3 to my answer up here, I multiply by 25, so I get 75, and then just make that there, so it's going to be 2.75. So that's the decimal portion, but again, remember, let's refer back to our um, problem here, it asks you for the percent. So for the percent, you're just going to go from your decimal to percent right, which means DPR, right, that's your pedal dipper, so if I'm going from decimal to percent right, I'm going to, whoops, I'm going to go one, two th spaces right, and that gives me 275%. So that is my final answer there. And our last problem here, number 19, says, in Janie's class, 7 out of 25, oops, hang on, 7 out of 25 students have blue eyes. What percent of the class has blue eyes? So some of you got that wrong just because you didn't give it to me as a percent. All right, so let's go ahead and write what we're starting with, 7 out of 25. And then they want it as a percent. So remember, percent means per 100. Hopefully you're hearing that in your sleep right now. So per 100. So to get from 25 to 100, it's going to be times 4. And to get from 7 to our answer, it's going to be times 4. So it's going to be 28 per 100, which is literally 28%. And that should be your final answer for problem number 19, 28%. So what I would expect you to do now is it's very important that you go through each and every one of these problems and that you correct them so that you know what your errors are. Because when you take the test, and even more importantly, in section 2.5, which we started today or the Friday before we left school, it's you have to have these skills in order to be able to go on with the rest of the book. So it's very important that you know exactly what you made um, your errors on. So this again was the 2.1 through 2.4 quiz corrections. So you should be making these corrections on your paper as well. Thank you very much for tuning in and I look forward to seeing you in the next class period.